Hey there, Derek Dumas here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what I do with my workflow real quick um, and how I get my display land models into the Unreal Engine. Uh, if you're doing game creation, this is an excellent tool. It's free for now, um, so get it and use it while you can. Others out there uh, that you have to pay for are a pain in the neck. I just, I like the way that display land does things and they're straight to the point. You upload, it goes ahead, it renders everything up there, and then, um, yeah, you're good from there. So, when you go ahead and you take your first 3D rendering, you're going to have something like this. Um, it's basically going to be, you're going to have things underneath draft. I mean, you have your pending, so you upload it, then you end up with your draft. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my town and I'm putting it into three dimensions. So... This one right here, I believe, let's take a look. It takes a little bit of time to load. Okay. Now, if I were to make this basically in Unreal or Blender, there'd be a lot that I have to deal with here, and then I was dealing with measurements. You're also going to end up with a lot of leftover geometry, like back here. I I haven't coined a phrase for these things yet, but yeah. And this is a great tool, again. Um, the problem is, hey, the geometry and the polygon count. So looking at this, we're going to go ahead, and this is the one that I want to do. This is going to go from public to personal just because, I mean, it's not a finished model. There's really not much to look at. I'm not really going to get much upvotes. What I ended up doing was when you're looking at the actual model itself, you're focusing, I'm, I'm focusing on key areas, which right here, as you can see, was mostly for the most part, the curb and the sidewalk. So with that being said, I need to go ahead and take this and put it on my PC. Now I've had a lot of people say, hey, look, transferring files. I'm going to show you how I do mine real quick. So we're going to go right here. We're going to go ahead. We're going to publish it. Caption. Tutorial. Done. Done. Uh, cross road method for the Methodist Church in Munson. And boom publish that thing. Now you get a copy link, you can download the video, download the mesh. If you're downloading the mesh, it's going to download it to your phone and then you got to find a way to transfer it. I just hit copy link. And what that does is you can see it copies it right to the clipboard. Then what I do is I go ahead and I got the Opera browser. Um, and it's great. So if you go into Opera Touch and you link your phone to your PC, you can go into something called MyFlow. And that's a meme. That's gross. Uh, so we're just going to delete that off here because don't want that in my workflow. And right here we can leave a note to ourselves. So I'm going to take this right here that we're looking at and get rid of the screen mirroring here. And I'm going to open up my Opera browser right here. I'm going to put these right here side by side so you can see exactly what's going on. Um, I'm going to click My Flow right here, Low Graphic Res. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to paste this right into the Opera browser. Hit that. There's my display link, and here it goes. It just pops up right here. Now I have this on my PC. It takes a little bit to load. I'm already logged in. You're going to have to log in. It's very simple. I love how Displayland, basically, or the creators of Displayland have it so it goes by phone number and you're not doing just username and password. That way it's kind of already like two-step authentication without being two-step authentication. Click download, and we want an OBJ. 
All right, and OBJ basically has your mesh, and then it also has um, your your textures, your material file, I should say, put to it. Not sure, just experimenting, because it's not a game that I'm working on. Okay. And then as soon as we're done with that, we hit Control and J, and it'll be the most recent one. So with that being shown there, I can go ahead and exit out of this. I can definitely exit out of everything else. There we go. All right. So now we have this. All right. This is our our 3D file. Uh, if you're using Windows 10, there's already a 3D vil uh, viewer built in, so you can go ahead and look at it. And you can notice that it's stretched, but for the most part, it's exactly what we were looking at. Um, these are your material files or your JPEG files. And what this does is they take all the pictures that they've been taken or the ones that have been used the most, larger the better. Um, and from there, they just take portions and cuts out, cutouts and they put it onto the file or the, uh, the object itself. So now that we have this, I called that, gosh, what was I? I like to keep them all pretty much the same. Crossroad method. Okay. So we can get out of all these now and go right into crossroad method. So I'm just going to create a new file folder and we'll just do method for Methodist church. Now I already have a whole bank that I stored, but I like to store them in my C drive. And then Project Munson. Models. From here we're just going to take this, drop it into method. So I have that right there. And underneath method, new folder, uh, we'll do street. So I have the street, drop that in there, and yeah, new folder. This is the raw file, the unedited, not used whatsoever. And then I'm going to do a new folder called Blender, and I'm going to do one more folder, which I forget what I normally name them. So now that we have that, and this is in here underneath raw street, I now have these um, right from my desktop method, blah, blah, blah. Okay, get rid of that, because that's like a loop. All right, so now that we have those installed, um, or downloaded, I should say, I can go ahead, go back to method, go back to desktop and I'm going to boop you know what we're gonna rename this so it's a little bit better Methodist jump into blender now comes the the fun part of cleaning up your model and I might as well start the unreal engine as well get that loaded up while we go ahead and deal with the rest of this time is money right a to go ahead and select everything X delete it and then file you're going to import your OBJ and because we put it right underneath the C drive underneath project Munson which is the project that I'm working on or the historical program that I'm working on um, we're gonna go into Methodist and then it's the raw file street and right here Here's our OBJ. So we double click on it and it loads right in. Now the reason why I'm loading this into Blender first and not loading it right into the Unreal Engine is because obviously this is not what I want it to be imported into, you know, what would be your game or anything else. Hitting Z, I can actually view the material that's used. And if great conversion again this is a wonderful program that really hits the nail on the head 
So this came out great right here. This came out great and right about, I really don't think this came out good at all. So from here, if I'm looking at the crosshair all the way over, that's got to go. So you're going to hit Z and wireframe. Look at all those polygons. This is another reason why we blot, uh, brought it into Blender first. The fact that if you were to have hundreds of models with this polygon count, it's going to bog down your system. It's going to bog down any system, really, up until I think November they're releasing the Unreal 5. I'm not positive, um, but they're basically releasing it at the same time so that the hardware that's working with the Unreal 5 engine is going to go ahead and, well, it's going to allow us to use all these polygons. So, Z rendered, because there's no extra lights here, shift and A, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Um, we'll do a spotlight. And then G, Z. So you can see right here where uh, bring up our power and then G on the Y axis so it's still casting shadows and everything I tried to take these um, after the Sun was behind the mountains so that I can go ahead and it can still cast shadows as you can see like right here where the indentions are it's doing a great job because again these are polygons that are just they're still triangular, but we'll fix that up. Um, either way, it still looks great. Now that we have that, we're gonna hit tab. And we're gonna go ahead and we wanna get rid of all the geometry that we're not using. So we wanna go into wireframe, we're gonna hit tab, and you can hit W to change your brush. And because it's in wireframe, I'm going to show you real quick. You just do, you know, X vertices. It cuts right through it. So you bring this back up, material preview, tab. See what it did? Cut right through. Now, if you have this in solid material preview or rendered, I want to show you the difference. We're going to cut right through here. So tab again. And I want to go ahead and I want to delete right through there. X, delete vertices. There's still leftover geometry. Because what it's doing is it's looking at the faces as well. Anything that has, um, well, basically anything that needs to be rendered or anything. Here. It's getting stuck on little parts and pieces like that. When it's wireframe, it goes right through. It's like an x-ray. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and look at this. That's actually not too bad. So let's get rid of the rest of this. So Z, wireframe. And you can also use, you know, the cursor with a rect uh, rectangular um, end to it. But I want to get as much as possible right here, right out of it. X, delete vertices. And now we're just cleaning up the model. Over here, material preview tab. So again, I mean, these didn't come out too, too bad. They're pretty good, they're usable. Right here, um, actually, I think I can even use that. That's good for lining it up or whatever you're doing. But if you really need to get, say, if you're doing a, a model and you saw those stretches, I call them stretches, and this is your model right here, and it's stretching all the way out to here, and then all the way up here, and then all the way down there at the bottom, it's gonna become really tough, really quick to go ahead and try to make anything look good when you can't edit the model they are great uh, display land is great at going ahead and making sure that you can crop it down to size but i don't believe they actually change the model it's just the view that you see in dis uh, display land so this is actually editing your model um, and we were able to do it right from our phone using the opera browser into this now the next thing is, you want to get rid of all lights, everything. You should have deleted everything when the scene first popped up. I believe I said that. Hopefully I did. Um, oh, we do want to get rid of this too. So this needs to go. So tab, Z, wireframe. And we're just going to jump right down into here. And we're going to come back. 
and X delete vertices. Um, tab Z material. So we still want it to go about here. I mean, you could use your grease pencil too. Um, I just like using the W key. I'm going to kind of go with this and just re-clean it up a little bit. I know that I'm going to have to go over the geometry again, but at least this way I know that I'm getting the color difference right here. Son of a baby. Okay. So I'm holding shift and I'm letting go and or letting go with the mouse button and then I'm touching that again and I'm still holding shift. These are just typical blender hotkeys that you use or well blender in general. X delete vertices. That actually didn't end up too bad. There was not a lot of leftover points. Now if I delete this, X delete vertices, it's gonna cut it off right there at the end. Let's see how that looks. That's not too too bad. This is blurry, that comes around here, tab. You can change your brush size too um, in this. I just like to use a smaller brush or you can hit W a couple times and you can just use the rectangle. Uh, rectangle. And there's that leftover geometry I was talking about, X delete vertices. Now this drops down a little bit if you were to look from the side view and right here, you can notice that this kind of bumps down. It's not a big deal. Um, if you really want to get in, change and edit it, that's fine. But at least now we have a model that's fairly well cleaned up. Um, this was a stop sign there, but you can see perfect example where display land doesn't capture the little things. And we're stuck with that shadow. This is just leftover extra geometry that we do not, in fact, need. Or at least I don't for what I'm doing. So with that, I'm just going to jump back into wireframe mode, hit W, jump down here, get that, X, delete, vertices, boom, done. Now, I want to show you what happens when we smooth it and when we don't smooth it. This model doesn't look bad at all. Um, I'm actually, again, very impressed with what Displayland does. I enjoy their program very much, and I'm very thankful that they're using it for free. Um, I don't know if they have rights for it. I didn't really look at the legalities of it because how I use my models and what I do with my models after capturing them with Displayland, um, it their end user license agreement I mean, um, doesn't really, I don't believe it really applies to me because I don't use anything of theirs whatsoever in my finished products. Um, there's no remnants of it or anything like that. However, if you were to take this and use it, this is I, their intellectual property. And if you jump into UV editing, this is what I was showing you before with each thing so let's hit a over here and you can see where all the mesh uh, meshes are and where they used it i can understand why they would want to use your information or something like that that's a pretty powerful program so if you look at this and then this picture right here that's that part of the mesh so let's highlight right here so this section it's just amazing to me how they unwrapped this and what they used. Um, actually, let's use W. So if we're doing just really the sidewalk and then the side right here, not even the street, look at all the multiple photos and where this wraps over and into. That's why it takes so long when you're uploading and it says processing. It's not the upload, it's not the download that's taking time, it's their servers or whatever, however they programmed it telling the program to make the model out of this and that's why it is photorealistic graphics um, and photorealistic models is because literally it is based off of photorealistic models okay so material here we go so we have that let's jump back into our layout I like to center it um, this actually isn't bad sometimes you might need to 
rotate them a little bit and then rearrange them you know if I wanted it to come down this way because here's my Y here's my X and here we'll drag this along the X and then G around the Y right in the middle that's not bad at all so with that being said now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make a finished folder so this is Methodist and new folder. Oh no, I just need to relink name it. Okay, finished. So we imported it as an .obj file, which is great. Um, really nothing wrong with that. So file, we're now going to export into FBX. And what FBX files do is you're not going to have those two or three separate files from each other. So you have your .obj file and then your .jpg and then your MTL, your material file. Um, this mixes them all into one file. So desktop documents, here we go. C, Project Munson, Models. I'm going to go into Methodist, Finished, and we'll do Street. And I can usually fly right through these. I can do a model in about eight minutes, not even lower, um, depending on what it is. Something like this should have taken me two seconds, but I'm kind of giving you guys the rundown. So we're going to export that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to smooth this. See these right here where the color is different and it's real choppy. So hit it. Shade smooth. Now it's all nice and smooth. This looks a lot better. Um, we're going to go into File, Export, again, FBX File, Street, and 1. Dot FBX. All right. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and we are going to jump into the Unreal Engine. Load up Test 1. Hmm, took a little bit longer than I thought. Lit, there we go. Can barely see my cursor here. This is a canon that I actually redid. This is not display land at all. Um, it was based off of display land. I used display land like a guy, but that's what I was trying to say earlier. Um, no polygons were exported. None of the textures were exported from display land. This is completely separate, but we're going to go ahead. And the first thing you're going to do is you want to keep everything nice and neat Go into you know, whatever you're using. I'm just going to put this right out here so you can see it. File, import, we're going to do first. Import all, and you're going to come up with a little error that says something about smoothing. Um, it doesn't really, no smoothing group information. I got to look more into that. So far, it hasn't had any effect to like exports or anything like that. So here's our material, and then right here is our actual model. So we're going to drag this. Nope, that is not the one. Jeez. Okay, so file, import, because I wasn't looking at it. So, C drive. And now we're going to go into Project Munson, models. All these I have numerous models for. Um, Methodist. And we're going to go into finished. Okay, here we go. Street, import all. You can change the settings. I don't really mess with things too, too much because everything seems to be talking to each other pretty well. Okay, and I'm just going to bring this up. What is going on here? Oh, because I have these force delete force delete 
forest elite that's why you want to make separate files because they're going to go with the default name let's do street one import all there we go hmm of course it's showing me problems well this is good that way if you run into this then you can see what to do all right with this being said we're going to go ahead and we are going to delete street one delete I am going to create a new folder called this open that up and I'm going to import street into this import there we go now I'm gonna drag street it's because the file names right here material zero I you're gonna want to go ahead um, it's gonna take a little bit to change that but here we go this is street and the next one we're gonna go back one oh, forward and this map first person BP this new I could actually just take this and change it to Methodist so I know that it's Methodist Church but um, we're gonna do a new folder file new folder that so that's good that that happened um, and we're going to import street one import all blah 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 and now we have street one as you can see there's the choppy um, I call it choppy but you can tell you can definitely see the poly and then this is the smoothed out version which looks a lot better um, you really can't tell from here though but the smoothing doesn't really affect performance whatsoever it only makes it look smoothed out a little bit and then when you're dealing with lighting and everything like that so we can go ahead and we can redo the shadows um, build we'll do lighting only and give it a minute because it's still importing down here lighting complete done play and I can't jump on it just yet because I got to change um, the way that see right here how it's kind of boxed in I got to change the boundaries but this shows you how you can just get it right into the Unreal Engine I'll go into boundaries and everything in the next tutorial because there's a lot I got to uh, touch up on but I noticed people asking on the display land discord like hey how do you how do you easily do this how do I the best way that I found is until they come out with a button and I'd love to have access to the display land dashboard or whatever that is with their um, it looks pretty cool actually um, the the new thing that you got to sign up you got to see if you're worthy enough or whatever to go ahead and try to uh, do it from there the, so they can give you access um, I'll also show you how to create your own models but yeah it's been a while I've taken a break um, you know children are a bliss but this is me giving you guys another tutorial as to how to get display land from your phone into your model edit the model quickly so let's do another one real quick for haha's -ha just so you guys get the idea let's pretend that I downloaded it I did what I showed before um, with the phone and we're gonna jump right into blender and we'll load up a new file oh another thing that I do too is I file save this as and then we'll save it as a blender file not prawn nope it goes underneath tutorial oh that's right I put it right into project Munson because I'm going to I'm actually going to use that model all right so Methodist 
um, finished blender. And this is going to be street dot blend. Save as. And this is the smooth model, obviously. Um, just because I, I like the smooth model, but if you're looking for a different aesthetic, then that's the way to go. So file, new, folder. Um, new, general. So quickly, AX delete. I'm going to jump right into the Opera browser. My flow. And we will do, this is a good one. Oh, I already downloaded that. This is actually from my friend. She sent me that one. It needs to be your own because you won't be able to download it <coughs> if your name is in it. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, we'll do, I don't believe I've used this one yet. Download, object mesh, not sure. Okay. Control and J, open. There we go. This can now pop out. I'm going to pull up Methodist and we're going to go back to this is the Memorial Hall raw Memorial Hall and we'll do new folder tutorial and with that I'm just gonna throw that right in here and you can, I don't know if you can do that. Is this the OBJ file? Let me see if I can just drag and drop that right in there. Yeah, it doesn't allow you to, crap. That'd be nice. All right, so we're just going to import the OBJ file into C drive, Project Munson, Models, Memorial Hall, uh, RAW, and Memorial Hall tutorial obj and that really doesn't need a whole heck of a lot of cleaning up um, so we'll just hit this tab I'm gonna hit W Z for the wireframe and that's got to go these got to go because if you import that that stuff's gonna be hanging around deleting the vertices oh yeah goodbye I think that's something up there too Okay. Nope, that's it. All right, tab. G on the Y, bring that over. G on the Z axis, bring that up a tad. Yeah, there we go. Rotate on the Z axis. G on the X. I gotta change the center point too. Um, and that's quick, but I'm just trying to do this real quick here. We'll do that after. Again, I'll do that in another tutorial. Ooh, that can go. All right, tab. We'll get rid of these. This can go. X delete vertices. X delete vertices. So see, you get the basic idea how I can clean that up pretty quickly. And then, of course, just right click it, shade smooth. Boom. Not bad. File, export as FBX. And I'm just going to do this one right on the desktop underneath not prawn. And 3D scanned textures. We'll just put it underneath here. Mem hall door. Export FBX, done. Jump back into here. File, new folder, because I'm not saving anything. And then import, desktop. I mean, you can put it right on your desktop, but um, it's not really that big of a deal. Mem hall door, import all. Okay, clear, exit. And just take that, there we go. And then with that, I can go ahead and I can just swing this around. Look at that, it's 
done. It's imported. All right. If anybody has any questions or comments, go ahead and take a take a gander at the other stuff I have as well. But just comment at the bottom, like, share. I don't know, whatever, whatever all the other YouTubers are saying that thing. But um, yeah, that's how you get your display land pretty easily. Display land models that you scanned pretty easily into Blender, and then from there exporting it to Blender to uh, the Unreal 4 engine, which I highly recommend you do because, again, um, they're going to be able to handle bigger like amounts of polygons very soon with the next ones that are coming out. This is all a lot here. Let's get this. This is a little bit overwhelming. But, yep. Uh, if you want to learn more about the project that I'm working on, Project Munson, go ahead and send me some info and I'll let you know kind of what I'm doing but I'll come out with a couple more display land tutorials and show you how to really maximize your output but this is enough to get you started and have a cleaned up model all right take care guys and as always be safe wear your masks wash your hands mm -hmm.